Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gaman Singh. Topic on newscast tonight, Soraya diasi Felt, former MAP nominee to the Attorney General Post, has opened up about the circumstances surrounding her resignation after less than two weeks in office. According to Kofelt, the VI Attorney General must be independent and cannot be micromanaged by the administration. News is April Knight has that story. Be forced to go through, and as I said, I would not be a figurehead attorney general, and I would not be a puppet for any governor. These were the words of former attorney general designee Soraya Diasi Kofelt at a press conference Friday. Kofelt, who resigned after just 10 days on the job, said the way the government house handled staffing within the Justice Department was unacceptable. According to Kofelt, Governor Kenneth Mapp promised her freedom in building her team, which she says is key to battling corruption. But what happened was completely the opposite. I was forced to accept upper-level staffing changes that I did not agree with and had not even been consulted on. One of those positions was that of Solicitor General. Kofelt said the administration picked a Solicitor General on its own without telling or consulting her. When she objected, the governor first agreed not to make the appointment, then changed his mind a week later. Government House's response to my objection was that I was not to communicate with that attorney while that attorney was working at the Department of Justice. In other words, I was told that this attorney was untouchable. As I saw it, that attorney would be able to do whatever that attorney wanted to do and have a direct line of communication to Government House. Kofelt also said that attorney was still working a private practice court case at the time, which was a violation of the VI code. But she was told to keep quiet about the appointment, she said, until after the court case. Kofelt refused to name said attorney. Terry Griffiths, however, now acting attorney general, is set to take the solicitor General Post. Griffiths was MAP's attorney in his lawsuit against the election system last year. Those were some pretty strong accusations made by the former AG designee. News 2 has reached out to Government House and will have Governor MAP's responses for you as soon as they're made available. Reporting for News 2, I'm April 9th. Again, as of news time, Governor MAP's team still has not returned our call for comment. Count on two to keep you updated. Late Tuesday, Governor Mapp submitted the names of 12 agency heads to the 31st legislature for approval. The governor submitted the name nominees he previously appointed to lead the departments of sports, parks and recreation, human services, personnel, fire, public works, tourism, agriculture and licensing and consumer affairs. Mapp also submitted the nominees' names for the Departments of Internal Revenue, Education, Finance, and the Bureau of Motor Vehicles. All the appointees must be confirmed by the Senate. And just a reminder, the State of the Territory, Governor Kenneth Mapp's State of the Territory Address will be held on Monday, January 26, before a formal session of the 31st Legislature. Be sure to tune in to CBS TV 2 at 7 p.m., we will air the address live at the legislature. The address will preempt our 7 p.m. newscast. However, be sure to tune in for the 12 a.m. airing. The following day, Tuesday, tune in for team coverage at 7 p.m. as we recap the address and get reactions and comments. Again, the address begins 7 p.m. live on Monday, January 26 on CBS TV 2. The GESC Health Insurance Board met Thursday and one retiree says he wasn't satisfied with the answers he got about an increase being charged to members. He says it's actually against the law. News News' Erica Parsons has that story. Retired coach Erman Foy is calling for the removal of the government's health insurance board chair, Clemmy Moses. I'm begging, pleading with the people in authority to remove the chairperson, Miss Moses due to the fact that she always start as she don't know. Foy says government employees and retirees under 65 are being penalized for not completing an insurance health risk assessment last year. The fine is being deducted from members' accounts, and Coach Foy says the increase is against the law. They insist that they're going to take $20.83 up to $500 from people who didn't do the health risk assessment. No board in the VA could arbitrarily introduce laws and penalties without getting the governor's signature. She needs to be removed immediately. Like yesterday, like how Ms. Moses said she didn't know about the law, and the law was right there 
and the opinion of the attorney general that tell them they could implement the fine? How she know that the attorney general said they could implement the fine, but she know the last said that the governor got to sign it? The increase went into effect January 1st. Foy says many members weren't properly notified. It said that all these letters were sitting in a box, still sitting in a box in personnel when they were supposed to be sent out to notify the people. They never sent out no kind of literature, nothing in writing stating that they're going to uh, implement this fine. In the deadline coming up, I should go and try and get a health risk assessment. But they find my address to tell me they're going to take my money. Calls to Ms. Moses for comment were not returned. Foy plans to take the board to court, and he says members who were charged even before the January 1 effective date should request their money back. They resend it, said to do media blessing to do it properly before they start finding the people again. So I'm asking the people to go back and demand the money, the $20.83, however much they already take out. Go Erica Parsons, News 2. Now, meanwhile, retirees over the age of 65 who upgraded to Plan F coverage have until the end of March to pay for the difference in price. The Government Employee Services Commission's Health Board says members will be receiving a very important letter about this from the Group Health Insurance Office. The letter will outline payment arrangements for retirees who selected the Plan F option. Retirees or members with questions can call the Group Health Insurance offices in both districts or visit the Division of Personnel offices directly for help. Full payment is due by March 31st this year. Well, firefighters battled a fire on St. John at the Mongoose Junction Shopping Center in Cruz Bay. Many onlookers and shoppers were evacuated around 1 p.m. this afternoon as lots of smoke was seen around the area. No injuries have been reported. Onlookers say they saw about four to five water trucks in the area assisting the fire department. As soon as we have some official details and we hear from fire officials, we will have more on the investigation on the cause of the fire. The fire apparently is out. It was in the Mongoose Junction area again. No one was reported injured. Major crime bureau detectives on St. Thomas are investigating an arson that uncovered the murder of a female victim. The fire, which affected a residence in the state Mandal, was called into 911 emergency dispatched just after 8 a.m. on January 23rd. Here's more. Once the fire was suppressed by members of the Virgin Islands Fire Service, the body of the female victim was found in the kitchen area. Police said the victim had trauma to her body and have ruled the incident a murder. Detectives said they are allowing the family to identify the body before releasing the victim's name. Turn our attention overseas. One of America's closest allies in the Middle East has died. Funeral services were underway for Saudi Arabia's King Abdallah. Abdallah's half-brother, Salman, immediately succeeded him. The 79-year-old had been performing many of his brother's responsibilities during the past year. King Abdallah was 90 years old. World leaders gathered for the funeral of Saudi Arabia's King Abdallah. He was then buried in an unmarked grave. Thousands of pilgrims mourned him in Mecca. As ruler of an oil-rich nation, King was among the wealthiest men in the world. He worked to modernize Saudi Arabia, gave more freedom to women, and was a strong U.S. ally in the battle against al-Qaeda. President Obama visited the ailing leader last March. Keeping our eye on the economy, U.S. stocks were higher Thursday after the European Central Bank pledged to buy 1.1 trillion euros worth of bonds to boost the EU economy. In other news, Rihanna took on the fashion retailer Topshop and won the pop singer triumphant a court battle over a Topshop t-shirt emblazoned with a photo of her. Britain's appeals court upheld a ruling that Topshop can't sell it because the star's Fans may be misled into thinking she endorsed it. Here's the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. The Dow down 141, Nasdaq up 7, S&P also down 11. Coming up on News 2, if you were wondering what that strange-looking ship berth at the Waiko Dock is all about, it's the Massachusetts Maritime Academy training ship, Kennedy. Details on why it's in the VI. The Massachusetts Maritime Academy training ship Kennedy 
is docked on the out of berth of the West Indian Company dock and will be there until Monday, January 26th as part of its annual cadet training voyage. T.S. Kennedy, owned by the Department of Transportation Maritime Administration, is a maritime training ship that serves as the training ship for the Massachusetts Maritime Academy for maritime students to become licensed merchant mariners. FEMA, VITEMA, National Guard, U.S. Coast Guard, personnel, WICO, and Port Authority all participated in a two-hour tour. Kyle Brego from St. John is a cadet on Kennedy. He interned with VI Harbor Pilots before leaving to graduate from Antilles School. Well, many of our CBS TV2 fans were watching the Crucian Christmas Carnival Parades on CBS TV2 as well as Vivid Streaming Visionary-1 and CBS2 teamed up for those who wanted to watch it live via live stream link. Now your opportunity to catch the replay is coming up. Log on to visionary-1.com and that's tonight at 6 p.m. and tomorrow at 10 a.m. Again, it's visionary-1.com. The Family Resource Center, an organization that touches the lives of thousands of Virgin Islanders who find themselves in need, honored James and Celia Carroll and Julian Jackson for their service to the community during their 2015 Peacemaker Gala last night. News News' Monica Jonigan was there and files this report. Supporters of the Family Resource Center gathered at the Prior Dalek Hall at Antilles School Thursday night to bestow the honor of Peacemaker on James and Celia Carroll and Julian the Hawk Jackson. The Carrolls are most well known for founding the annual Walk Run to End Gun Violence and the VI Fathers March after the death of their 18-year-old son Jason in 2000. It is because of these individuals who have lost their lives for their families and also for those young men who are involved in these violent acts as the malefactors that we walk and run every year. I just want to say that if it wasn't for the grace of the Lord, I could not do the type of work that he has called us to do because it takes his grace and his strength. I could only remember the day that our son was murdered and I thought I would lose my mind. And the only person that I could call upon was the Lord. And he didn't only give me strength, but he gave me his peace that surpasses all understanding, that I was able to go on and do all what you see us doing in this community. I want to also thank the champ for his assistance in the past. I don't know if everyone knows this, but uh, he is also over the years uh, given of his time in helping us with just about all of our events. Um, I'm amazed and I want to congratulate everybody involved in the Family Resource Center for the hard work, for the dedication, okay, and for the, the strides that you have made in this community. Monica Jonigan, News 2. Congrats to the honorees. Well, the Caribbean Genealogy Library in St. Thomas will have its annual membership meeting on January 24th at 2 p.m. at the library that's located in Alcoins Plaza at the top of Raffoon Hill. CGL is pleased to have a special guest speaker for the annual meeting, Dr. Paul Puker. Puker is the archivist at the Moravian Archives in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. He will present a lecture entitled Exploring St. Thomas and St. John Records, held at the Moravian Archives in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. These records span over 280 years of life in St. Thomas and St. John. Well, are you ready for our Pet of the Week segment? It's the weekend. You can head over there to the Humane Society. Now, volunteer Benjamin Coverdale stopped by with the cute pup, and he's telling us all about her. Now, don't forget, you can call the Humane Society at 775-0599 if you're interested. This is Sally, our Humane Society dog. She is 12 weeks old. She is the last puppy in her litter. She is very soft, cute. She is also very fluffy. She needs a home and she is ready to be adopted. Come down to the Humane Society to see her. So cute. Well, be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.